was one void. But that begs the question. Yesterday, I think twice or three times we saw support <laughs> void come out. What's the chances, John? Uh, oh, I'm not sure if those chances are high when you hero. have such a prolific void flare like Savage. It doesn't Five feel like the easiest faces void game for him as a core, though. I'm just looking at the Bat Rider and the Beast, uh, Primal Beast. The Bat Rider in lane, the faces void theoretically has a decent time. With Time Walk, you can kind of just shrug off the damage the Bat Rider might want to do, assuming it's Radiant offlane for fan. force. Lelouch has played a very mean mid Bat Rider as well. I. I don't know if you'd want it support. Like, a support duo of Undying and Faces Void sounds pretty hard to pull off. Like, there isn't much big playmaking or setting up that these two heroes can do outside of, say, maybe the Chrono uh, on Faces Void. So, hero, a support duo of that moron. here just doesn't feel great. Um, At the you, same you, time, you picking this Faces Void seconds. early on does provide a lot of counters for Polaris. You can see Talon, they're forced to ban out the Venge. There are some options here for Polaris if they want to dip into it. They could still fit something like, say, Oracle Hard 5 could be one way. They could try for maybe something like the Shaker, which we have seen Core Void struggle, especially if you use the Time Walk to initiate. So it's not all clear for Talon. Again, it's a very early place to lock in Void. The only time we've seen that was from yesterday, from Army Genesis, where Norman did run you, it you twice. Really gotta pick a hero. And the one time we saw the core Void from DB, it did face those issues there, Mike. Yeah, five seconds left now. Absolutely. Well, we are going to have to wait out some uh, some final bands here, or rather, the, the midway bands before we can continue. John, you know, it begs the question as well. Like, I just kind of said that there was, you know, only two first phase bands allowed, and, you know, you can only ban so many heroes. I think I was hearing some pros talk about it as well recently, but do you feel like it's about time that the drafting style changes and we up it to, say, three first phase bands? Because it, mm. it feels like there's too many good heroes now. Uh, I, I, honestly, if you think back to before this change, uh, back to the, what was it, three or four oh, bands Radiant first phase, band. it felt oh, too limiting. I, I do personally prefer two bands first phase and just kind oh, of allowing some band. of those broken heroes through. It makes it a little bit more exciting. I know teams do not want to deal with that, but it does, I, I feel in my mind, it provides for the viewers a more exciting game. Because, you know, you don't yeah. instantly get all of this you, you really cheese banned out. You, you don't instantly get your strongest heroes on either team banned um, out. You've you, always you, you got the option to kind of pick and protect. And that just makes it more exciting. I mean, I, again, I recall like maybe in 2017, 2018, when you had these prolonged first phase bans, and then the pick and ban order was just kind of different. It did feel... It did feel a little bit more predictable because by the first phase, oh, you're only left band. with, you know, none of the strongest heroes. So you're probably maybe here and there, a team would let one slide through in first phase and they try to counteract it. But it would kind of lead to more bog standard drafts. Now, there is a little bit of coalescence, like uh, all these drafts kind of go into the same direction. Uh, but there is more variety from the first phase because moron. of this style. It's very fair, John. I, I guess that is a, a good point, fine. right? Like you'd. Screw the pro players. We want entertaining matches. <laughs> you don't get three bands. You get two. You're going to like it whether you Radiant like it or not. Pick. Too bad. I like your thinking, Jonathan. I don't, I don't know where I was going with that. Well, I'm thinking of the pros all of a sudden. That's terrible. <laughs> My goodness, what's wrong with me? Yeah, I mean, I, I respect your opinion. Right? Like you, it is a headache. That first phase is much more delicate than it used to be. You have to figure out what you want to do. You tend to have to pick up a core flex now just to ensure that you can kind of adjust on the spot. I love the adjustment here from Polaris as well. Speaking about that, we see the Phoenix come out. And specifically in that Army Geniuses match up against Logan, we saw that Phoenix as a counteraction oh, to the Faces Void. Like to the, pick a hero. the Sunray healing is there. The attack speed slow is yeah, going to be annoying. The egg outside now. Chrono with a BKB piercing stun is always going to be a massive issue. And Talon doesn't have a straightforward way of clearing out that Phoenix. You see the respect bands from Polaris taking care of the Snapfire. One of the big heroes that Talon loves to run in the support. And that just machine guns through that Phoenix egg. So you don't have a straightforward answer for that Supernova when it does come out. And that's kind of crazy, right? Because, like, you'd love a Snapfire into the Undying to get rid of the Tombstone. Dire team but it, it seems like they're going to fight fire with fire here. It's like, okay, you've got a Tombstone? Fine. We'll pick Phoenix, we'll huh. pop Egg, Come on, we'll Ray see who takes out who. It's like the Snapfire is the one answer to both problems, and neither team's going to have it. 
And in we go, Jonathan. This is very surprising. And Nick's assassin to pop out now. One of your personal favorites. Also the puck mid to come out. Much more bog standard. Uh, ten but seconds John, to pick the, your hero, the Nick's you assassin. Moron. Why has this come out? What the hell is going on here? Yeah, it's really good against now. all your heroes. Like it'll stop the primal beast from trampling over you once you pop the spike carapace. Uh, really easy to cancel off Sunray and anything the Phoenix wants to do outside of Egg. Really easy to stop the Bat Rider from running off as well. So it kind of ties into that. It's really good control. It stops a lot of these channeled spells. Uh, even the Primal Beast, like pre-BKB, he's not going to be able to pulverize that much as long as this Nyx is around with Spike Carapace. Like, he will be able to just cancel off. And I like that talent go into the Mikado Puck because when you see Primal Beast and Phoenix, which are leaning towards the support do right now although there is room to still flex the problem beast as say the nico hero here the force hero on the offlane there's not much hard hold for the puck like you have blink lasso down the line but blink's not an early priority for bat rider we tend to see travel oh, bkb man. before the blink for a lot of mid players if that is lelouch's hero so there's not much to really stop Mikado from jumping in and out and polaris just go into the natsumi morphling so Laning wise, it shouldn't be too bad. It is a decent court core matchup against the Faces Void. You can oh still man, kind of sprint more right, right before the Chrono flies out. There's enough time to kind of get that done. Five the Nyx is there to bring your mana, fine. but it's not like you have the highest int in the world, so you're not losing as much mana as well. And this can make it tough for the side of talent to kind of find that pause one. Like if Natsumi's quick enough, the Chrono might not amount to much besides some smaller pickoffs here. Yeah, absolutely not. Well, final bands to come here before we can finish off these drafts. John, I don't mean to start the drama early, right? I, I, I realize Talon has to win out this series to, and T1 would have to win out this series for us to get that matchup, right? The T1 versus Talon matchup in the, uh, the upper bracket. But couldn't help but notice, Jonathan, Makoto had some words to say about T1 prior to the qualifiers starting that have been circulating yeah, around really as of late, saying that he left. believes if Talon had to go up against T1, they would win um, outright. You, you, you and that apparently hero, uh, Anna and Topsa would have chemistry issues with the rest of T1. So if that matchup happens, there's going to be some very, very spicy kind of uh, games going on, I think. I'm sure the side of T1 seen those words being said, very strong words by Makoto. Obviously, he was just trying to answer a question, Ooh, but you get my point, John. This is SCA. You can't talk without backing it up, and we might get a, get the pleasure of seeing that matchup later on. Entire team, pick it, pick oh, it yeah. good. It's definitely a possibility, and it's pretty damn exciting to see it later on. They have to beat Polaris first, and again, with with Talon's performance being a little bit inconsistent, it's hard to say. Uh, last time they met in Hatia, that's. Pretty much the only win Talon found in the best of one groups up against Polaris. And you, you really that was Polaris really that brought left. five games to boom. So maybe they've got the answers yeah, here. Yeah, it still feels pretty now. confident in this draft to go for the first phase void and to have it go against this Morphling, which is going to be annoying. We do still have a last pick left. It does look like Polaris are just defending this Morphling pick. They're blocking off Dawnbreaker for the instant response. They're blocking off the AA to ensure the Morphling... Strength Morph is still going to be effective. It does beg the question as to what they're looking for. It maybe feels like they're looking for a Q hero with Hyde taking something like the Nyx. Nyx faces Void Lane isn't that good. But then again, Nyx on Dying Lane also isn't that good. For Q heroes, Enchantress is left. They go with a Skyrath Mage. So it comes out. And this is something we've seen Logan run up against, I believe, Talon the first day where it didn't feel as impactful. I'm keen to see if Talon actually makes it work. Because it feels like when you start uh, falling behind in the Sky Wrath, the hero really just doesn't contribute. Especially um, you, as the you, game drags on, the BKB is coming seconds. out. The hero just doesn't survive unless you get the shard. Even with the shard, the added armor, it's nice. It does need a lot of spell spam for you to really hit a good amount of armor i feel like yeah. you do have i mean just the threat of morphling onto the sky if you manage to jump him even without a shotgun you're that sky rat's probably dead if oh, you do absolutely. manage to catch him outside vision pre manta you do have a lot of a lot of openings there but that's a very specific and small timing that talent have to play with no that's very fair john Skyrath definitely not going to have a very good time against this morph, that's for sure. So the, the Void Skyrath oh, combo, though, like you mentioned, is, is probably going to be quite potent as the Tide Hunter comes out. That's something a little bit mm. new. We haven't seen so much of this during the qualifier. I can appreciate it, though. They were lacking 
a little bit of team fight, I would argue, on the uh, on the side of Polaris Esports. So they'll go ahead and pick that one up. Force will take the offlane tide. It looks like it's going to be the position for Primal Beast coming up. Xavius, exciting times, John. This will be game one between Polaris Esports and, of course, Talon Esports. And I'll ask you straight off the bat, the drafts are finished. Forget the teams. Who came out with the better draft? Better draft? I would probably lean towards Polaris. I, I like the aggression we're seeing coming out from them. Um, I like the lanes coming out, like Tidehunter versus Faces Void feels really good for Force oh, man, to slow down Savage's like farm. Void. I mean, Savage is a great Void player, but five seconds, Morty. Yeah, Void does take some time to build up. It, we've seen, we've been seeing a lot of Midas Void, Midas Maelstrom. You're not going to be doing a lot of damage in that Kroner. You're going to need a lot of space out. Uh, Polaris, you could argue the same thing goes for Natsumi, but the rest of the team, especially Xavius and this Primal Beast, it just feels like they're going to be ready to be aggressive. And that's something Talon has to kind of temper themselves around. It feels like all the pressure on Talon's end is on KP. If he has a good lane and he manages to get this early presence on the Undying, start to force some fights around himself, and then that's where the space comes out for Savage. Mikado can kind of follow through with KP once he has, say, his Witchblade, Witchblade Travels. And you can kind of get aggressive. Like, you still have this good support combination from Talon of um, Skywrath Mage and Nyx. But again, the window for that support is pretty short. I'd say the first 20 minutes is when that support do feels great. Past that point, once the first few BKBs come on, it becomes a lot harder to really get value from that control and damage. There's my favorite smile in, in the whole of SEA Dota Q. Lovely, lovely smile from Q. Always a happy guy. Like, did he just dye his hair? I can't even tell. I could have sworn his hair was brown the other day, John. Yeah. Did Q just dye his... No. Did he just bleach his it, hair? It was, it was that color. It was that color okay. yesterday, I believe. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just looks a bit never... brighter. Maybe the lights are a little better, you know? It, it did look dark, darker, but I think the lighting was... He's oh, a good yeah. looking lad. And speaking of hair, I can oh, appreciate yeah. the fact that AU's got, had the same hair for <laughs> ever since I've seen him, Jonathan. Fantastic haircut. <laughs> It's a timeless haircut there from AU. You never get rid of that. It's a classic no. cut. It's a cut that we all had back in the days. We all had back in the days. You can see that all over the net cafe. that all over the net cafe. A bit of a pause. A bit of a pause. Oh, absolutely. A bit of a pause here, so we're going to be stuck. A bit of a pause here, so we're going to be stuck. Lovely players first. Maybe take this time, Mikey. I want you to predict. Mikey, I want you to predict. Give us some predictions here. We've got it on hand. Well, I don't mean to show off, but I was three out of four yesterday, so I suppose I will take a turn to predict here, Jonathan. Play with the highest net worth by 25 minutes. Ooh, I, I, I'm thinking Natsumi or Savage for sure. These guys, are, both of them are so good. Uh, I feel like Natsumi's... Oh, I'm going to go Savage, because you, you're going to get Maelstrom Midas, right? So I'll go Savage. Will the tower be cool by 10 minutes? Ye mm. No. No, it will not. Uh, player who gets the longest kill streak will be. <sighs> to me and Savage again, John. It's hard for me to decide between these two. Because I, I don't know which team's going to win this. I, I truly don't. This will be a close one. Um, I'm going to say Savage, only because I went with the net worth highest by 25. Will a tower be denied? No. No way. All right. There you go. All right. We will find out soon enough. We will find out soon enough. I think a tower will be denied. I, I think a tower, tower will be denied. Otherwise, but otherwise, a tower will be denied and maybe Potter gets the longest kill streak. Gets the longest kill streak. But beyond uh, that, beyond I that, every other point there. Mike, I'm, sticking, point with there. Mike, I'm sticking with your stuff, I'm sticking with your stuff, though. You, it's your prediction. You, it's, your, it's your prediction. It's your prediction. We'll go with it as well. We'll go with it as well. have some all chat. Did have some all chat. I don't think we caught that. I don't think we caught that. We had a little bit of pause. We had a little bit of pause. Lots of all chat coming out. Both sides again have played with each other a lot. They're running each other in pubs a lot. There's something about there's something Natsumi about asking Savage, Natsumi if asking Savage if she could fly for some reason. And Savage said reason. yes, go to UDV Savage said with yes, him. go like, to uh, UDV what? with him. I'm like, ah, uh, what? what? Now it's Cerxia? Or do you actually now mean just going to UDV randomly and bank off for some reason? Bank no problem, saying, reason. Hi, I'm no sure, problem saying hi, I'm sure. No problem saying hi. You know, these sure, guys are funny. Especially the Polaris boys. They are very funny lads. They are very funny lads. funny lads. If you check their Facebook. funny lads. If you check their Facebook. They have some really weird posts. They have some really weird posts. one hell of a shit is just one That's all I can say about that. That's all I can say about that. This place goes ham. Watch your damn language there, Jonathan. My goodness, how rude. <laughs> Shout out to Polaris, by the way, John. They did send us a jersey, or at least I received mine. I haven't, I haven't gotten, managed to take a photo yet, but I'll, I'll have to... Hey, hold on. You can wait, Jonathan. They, they sent it to the important course, guy, right? The, the guy course, that matters got it. Anyway, Talon. 
We'll see if they find a uh, level one here. Balloons have been thrown out. Or Slay Lush. They're going to try and fight with Hyde on that Skyrath, and we'll be able to bully him away. Our bottom lane, same thing happening. Topside Xavier showed up. Won't be able to steal it from Savage, so it is going to be a two for two trade. Been kind of starting between these two teams. And we will start with the mid lane once again. Of course, you're going to have Makoto on his puck against Slay Lush on his signature bat rider here, John. Puck first bat rider. Who do you give the advantage over to? I'd say it's not too bad for Puck. I'd say it's I mean, not too bad. Bat Rider we tend to see has some bat issues. Bat Rider we tend to see playing out a little bit on early on. Playing out a little bit on early phase, like, on. Like, need phase, like, a couple of stacks of napalm up. Stacks of napalm up. Stacks of napalm up. Stick as you can to. Up against the mid Bat Rider. Lush should still be able to get some good damage. Lush should still be able to get some good damage. Nakata will have to temper himself around. Nakata will have to temper himself around. Maybe the main orb and maybe the main orb and maybe the So there is a window there for Lush to actually get aggressive. There is a window there for Lush to actually get aggressive. In terms of trading, a lot of trading for Nakata. A lot of trading for Nakata. So as long as Penetrates favorably and hits his level three mark. With the level three mark, 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 with the level three with the pause three on dying, how do you feel about that against the Morphling and AU's Phoenix? Like, do you th do you think they can dominate this lane with this pause three on dying, or, or should it go the other way? I think it's all right. Every all time right. Natsumi Every wants time to go full agile, he has ten minus eight. He has ten minus eight. Strength. He's, he's got to keep he's, some. He's got to keep strength some shift on strength hand. Shift on hand. That means his last that hitting is not going to be as good. So you are getting pressed. You are getting pressed in that sense. Once AU does have the level, so does have the level, so would try to be aggressive as well. Would try to be aggressive as well. dying is tank. The undying is like your best off, like your maybe best a sunray off, maybe a sunray off. Q's already a good response. Q's already a good response. To that, with, of course, the with spike characters down the, the line. Spike characters down the line. And I think when it comes down to it, I think when it comes I'm down not to it, he's probably not going to die. But he's also not probably not going to die. He's also not going to see us that much because of this lane. Of course, that final lane as well, top lane. You're going to have force there on that position three tide. He'll be alert there with Xavius on the primal base pods four. You will have Savage and Hyde against the two. This feels like one of those lanes that could go either way. Maybe a bit more of a farmy lane between these two teams. Because with the Primal Beast in your lane, it, it's always kind of scary. But it is a pause for Beast. And with the Tidehunter to try and play with, chances are you aren't going to have too much kill potential against the pause one Void. Maybe if you catch out Hyde, I would argue it's a much easier kill. But... Hyde's doing a really good job of just sitting back and not allowing himself to get out of position. Yeah, he's just standing back, yeah, trading where he can, but back, trading not where really can, trying to force the issue. Not really that's trying to force the issue. The sky just that's nuts in this lane. The sky just nuts in this If a gush comes out, if a gush comes out, Hyde is more than likely just dead beyond slot follow-up. So, follow gotta stay back a lot more. Gotta stay back a lot more. Savage is farming a lot better in comparison to Natsumi. Still not the freeze lane. This is a tire hunter lane. This is a tire hunter lane. Time, but Tyrus has been stopping him from getting that build up him from getting that build up either. Certainly not. Fight over that bot lane. Mean too much. Makoto is farming very well on this puck right now, by the way. John 19 and 4 on the mid puck against Leilusha 16 and 3 on the bat rider. Still a very even matchup, but Makoto doesn't seem too concerned about the bat rider's presence here. And well, puck should have a decent time getting away every single time as long as he does have the orb up. He's not too concerned about Leilusha making a jump in with the firefly. Maybe once you have Lasso, but before that stage, Makoto, he seems like he's going to be just fine to free farm. Top lane. Xavius. Bit of a chase going on. Savage, he doesn't actually have Bash leveled up, so he can't hold Xavius down. And now the turnaround with the Onslaught onto Hyde. That is so much damage from Xavius. Two hits is all he got, but it was too much damage. Savage going to try and turn around on Xavius, but again, without the Bash... You haven't really oh, got a chance of locking this man down. He's going to be all right. I, I don't mind us too much. I, I don't mind us too much. Heal up on Savage. Heal up there's on no Savage. There's, there's no hide. big threat on Min because hide. Savage does have a value point. Does have a value point. Stab and dilation. So you see the onslaught. See the onslaught. Too many slow. And with the additional slow from the concussive, actually chasing the sky is a tough prospect. They are playing this lane a lot more defensively. They are playing this lane a lot more defensively. It's not something that the offensive players can really pierce readily just yet. Really pierce readily just yet. Certainly not. I mean, it's one of those things. Force might just kind of say, hey, I'd just rather secure a farm right now anyway. You know, it seems like Savage is actually behind in CS as well. So Force is doing a decent job of just kind of keeping Savage a bit 
a bit less farmed than he should be. Speaking of being less farmed, Natsumi's really less farmed here. 12 and 3 in terms of CS. The untying pause 3 from KP really turning out to be very potent so far during the laning stage, as you'd kind of expect. 25 and 11 is the scoreline of the CS for KP. Just really focusing in on the denies here on that undying and doing a great job of it. Natsumi, he's not having a good time whatsoever. Uh, it just goes back to that. Just goes weird back dynamic to that. Where weird dynamic if you do where go strength, if you do more, go strength uh, more, uh, uh, more here, uh, or not to here, he has not to no HP. He has no HP. Absolutely no uh, HP. Because absolutely all the reductions no coming out. Reductions he can't coming afford to really go all in. He can't afford to really go all in. That just means KP has an easier time. KP has an easier controlling up. Controlling up. I'm going to have to see how well Natsumi recovers that land. Natsumi recovers that land in space. Considering the slow restart, considering the slow comparison to Savage, like, like everyone else is tied in, in for everyone else is tied in for evenly here. And then uh, that Impel ends up missing there from Q. Maybe you would have been able to set up for something onto Natsumi had you landed that, but I suppose Natsumi would have had the waveform anyway. Mid lane, a bit of a group up. Both teams fighting over those six minute power rune timings. They are going to get unlucky on Talon Esports. Polaris, they will be able to get lucky with the bot rune and do pick up a haste and immediately Lelouch is going to TP down bot to try and deal with KP here on this Undying. He has not leveled up Tombstone or Soul Ring yet. KP, he will eventually do so and try to fight back. Natsumi is doing the exact same thing and here comes Q with the Spine Carapace and the Impale trying to put a hold to Lelouch, but he is not giving up. KP will get chased down to the ends of the earth and they will secure the pause three Undying First blood to the Batrider. That's a big kill. Timely That's rotation kill. out to just Timely open up Natsumi's lane. Open up Natsumi's lane. Best screen you could possibly Best ask for there as well. Best you could possibly ask for there as well. Haste allowed nice to run over. Haste allowed to over. Haste allowed to, to run stop over. Really I'm outside to stop that. Even then, one stun is even then. Even one stun is enough. Even with follow up. Despite Karabas follow up. Lelouch just has his wave. So a good start. So a good start. Find that bonus. For Plyas to find that bonus. I tried to play poke a bit. Doesn't have the ancient seal. Really combined to really look at the damage. He did have Savius around to protect. He did have Savius around to protect. Regularmente el daño mágico Por allí con intenciones de ese Scrum Mitch de rotar, ¿no? de generar problemas en medio Pero no consigue mucho For not to me, not unplayable. It's not unplayable. Just kind of hang and back. Kind of hang back. Falls out long enough. Falls out long enough. You should be able to farm the void. Farm. farm the void. Farm. Again, face is void. Again, not the fastest void. farm in the world. Kidding me? Uh, Dyer's top tower is under attack. R Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Force is near fantasy.
Dyer's top tower is under attack. but Dyer's top tower just fell. leads me to believe that Dyer just fortified their structure. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, Radiant's bottom tower is under attack! Oh, Radiant's bottom tower is under attack! Man, you might as well save that energy, because Radiant just fortified their structures! Oh, Radiant's bottom tower is under attack! Oh boy, Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Uh, Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack! Way to go! Radiant's bottom tower is completely gone!
Cory, watch out! It's a killing spree! Middle tower, it's gone. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Rascals are hitting the entire bottom tower. Oh my god! Four! Four in a row! That's he, he's now dominating! He's dominating, Rick!
Dyer's bottom tower is under attack! Oh boy, Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, Radiant's bottom tower is under attack! Radiant's bottom tower is under attack! Uh, uh Dyer's top tower is under attack. Ooh, Dyer, you gotta fortify them, their structures. Good work. Oh, Radiant's bottom tower is under attack! Dyer's top tower is under attack. You know, Morty, it sometimes feels like they don't even care. I wonder what they're gonna build where Dyer's top tower used to be. Radiant's middle tower is under attack! Uh, Dyer's top tower is under attack. R Radiant's middle tower is under attack! under attack Oh, Radiant's top tower is under attack. Uh, Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh great, Dyer's bottom tower just got destroyed! Oh, Radiant's top tower is under attack! Whoa, Dyer's bottom tower is under attack! Oh jeez, Morty, they're going after Dyer's bottom tower! Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Illusion! Yeah. Oh boy, Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, Radiant's top tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower just took a big beating. It's gone. 
Oh, Radiant's top tower is under attack! Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, Radiant's top tower is under attack! He just it's mega killed. Time to hibernate. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. under attack.
its middle tower is under attack. Middle Tower is under attack! Oh, Radiant's Middle Tower is destroyed! Things are getting dire! Oh, nice, Morty. Good one.
fortified their structures. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Couldn't do much about Radiant's bottom tower, could you?
Ho! Oh, good, Soki. Radiance top tower is under attack. Radiance courier got killed. You know how much stuff he was carrying. under attack.
Towers under attack. Uh, Dyer's bottom towers under attack. Oh boy, Dyer's bottom towers getting hit. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, great. Dyer's bottom tower just got Whoa, destroyed. Dyer's bottom barracks just exceed better days. Oh, boy, somebody called the trouble. Dyer's He's bottom here barracks already. are hit, and they're done. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Looks like Dyer's structures are fortified. Jeez, Radiant's middle tower is not correct. Whoa!
Flyers carrier just got killed. realities and let me tell you this is definitely not a remarkable moment at all in any way shape or form
Fortify them, their structures. Good work. Oh, Radiant's top tower is under attack. Oh, Radiant's top tower is under attack. Radiant's top tower has fallen! Oh, Radiant's top tower is under attack! Oh, oh, killing spree! Oh, everyone bow down! Oh, she accident! It was an accident, I bet. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack! Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack.
Command. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Oh man, what? Get up on out of here, cause Radiant just fortified their structures. <laughs> oh, Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Towers under attack. Mark these words. They're the last you will hear. Anymore. Radiant's middle this tower isn't an is under attack. Now. Jeez, Radiant's middle tower just got wrecked. Towers under attack. Night silence. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh, own it. Undefended.
he's from Boston because he's wicked sick. Dire team ban. Ooh, radiant team ban. Name him the MVP after that game one, but the void is proving to be so powerful. Speaking of powerful, though, that primal beast. Xavius, he mm. was doing so much work, man. He tried so hard. Uh, that, that rock throw into the Ravage and the Age of Steel, that was just absolutely splendid to watch from Polaris Esports, but it just didn't prove to be enough. They'll follow up with the Lich as well here on Polaris's end. John, talk to me about the mentality of Polaris right now. After a game like that, 66 minutes, you end up losing game one. Such a close affair. You can, you can see the faces right now. They... I, I don't know if they look upset, but there's a little bit of, there's something in there. You know, you, you can't be happy after mm. that game one for Polaris. What, what are you thinking? What's going through the minds of Polaris right now? I feel like, again, it goes back to AU. With him, not just as coach, but as a player, he's able to directly connect with him a lot better because he's in that game. He knows what just happened. He was there with him. So he's managed, he, he can level them out a lot more. I think after a game like that for Polaris, you know, there's some games where you lose and you feel like absolutely terrible. There's some games where you lose and you're like, we did pretty damn well. Let's reset. We can do it in the next game. And I think that last game was one of those games for Polaris, where they're like, we did everything we could. We executed pretty damn well for most of that game. Just have a couple of issues to fix up. And that should motivate them. I, I think after a game like that, I feel like Polaris should be able to actually look at that, realize, all right, Talon actually oh, made so many mistakes that we could have capitalized on. We just need to force them to do that again and realize those mistakes and close it out. And I'm sure the guiding voice of AU will kind of help them plan around that here. Let's see, Doom coming out as well. A hero we have not seen as of late, but obviously very potent uh, in the current meta as well. The new Ags upgrade proving to be very, very effective against a hero like Void as well. You'd love having Doom. Force him to buy that Lincoln Sphere later on here on Savage. The Doom coming out, a, a quite a potent pick, I would argue, here from Polaris Esports. And a nice switch up for their draft, that's for sure. Again, though, you, you do have the option of running Support Void. You know, that, that's still available to run if you do wish, <laughs> if you want to flex it that way. Uh, not that I'm saying that is going to be what happens, because Savage loves playing the Void. But you never know. You could still make that happen if you want. Yeah, it does feel like, and you've got answers for the Void once more, but Talon just doesn't seem to mind. In fact, it feels like they just prioritize the Void because it gets second phase banned. So they just kind of pick it up. They want to give Savage the hero he really excels on. I think, again, you look at Polaris and their opening, back into the Primal Beast with the Lich, the Doom just makes it hellish for Savage once more. And we have seen some Dooms go for different builds. Like, we have seen Infernal Blade actually rise up in priority. You can also just devour a nice mana burn creep, removing savages, saving presence with a time walk. There's there's a lot of ways to play that lane for Polaris if they want. And there is still some flexibility on the Doom. 
as we have seen safe lane doom come out here and there although the off lane doom does feel more popular now with a build up so can't see where they go from there i like that they do respect ben this mikato puck because it as you and i pointed out mikato just felt like the big factor that allowed talent to actually take that game late and they he just played like a madman he was picking off people forcing these fights to be very spread out while the rest of his team gathered attention on themselves and they had no hard hold so they have to respect ben that out they also take out the batrider themselves here on polaris and talent do pick up the dazzle so that should be our hide hero. You do have good saves coming out onto the void. Um, hide did a pretty damn good job with the silences, and we didn't really see a Book of Shadows play, but the kind of the same mindset now with the Dazzle. With the Shallow Grave, you should be able to enable Savage. In fact, a lot of your lineup feels like it's just there to help this face's void this time around. Morsi Sidekick's gonna help. You know, you don't have that much damage going into the Chrono. Right now, you only have this Quap from Mikato. But you have a lot of ways of making Savage feel stronger and safer in that corner when it does come out. Ah, absolutely. You certainly do. There's the Kunkka coming out now for Polaris. So a real big switch up coming out here. See the Kunkka very good against the Queen of Pain, not only during the laning stage, but having the X back against Quop and Void is always going to be very, very effective throughout this game. Especially before they have those BKBs up. Or even catching out heroes like the Marcy. And the Dazzle going to be very effective there with the X up from the Kunkka. So I, I think that's a very, very strong pick coming out from Polaris Esports. And you'd have to agree, John, a, a lot of value for the Kunkka this game. Yeah, like the saving factor with the boat buff is big. You have to hold something well, like the Morsi or the Quap is going to be really good as well. And that does give you a good lane match. We have seen Quap against Kunkka. And Lelouch has played a lot of mid Kunkka all the way back to his Adroit days. It's something he specializes in almost to the same extent that we know Yopaj does. And the Quap Kunkka lane is pretty Kunkka favorite. Quap doesn't have that much presence there. You can play with Shadow Strike. Tidebringer just kind of owns that lane. So I think they're setting themselves up for a better game here on Polaris. But just by slowing Mikado down, you do have a better time. Because the Bat Rider lane for Lelouch up against the Puck wasn't quite a win. Mikado was finding more. This time around, Lelouch should have a better time. Uh, I go back to the point you made earlier as well, by the way, John. I mean, you, you pointed out AU having that kind of... Uh, the, the, the presence to be able to just tell the team, like, calm down, it was a good game, let's, let's reset and go for game number two. And you see how stoic the man looks as well in that previous camera shot. Just does not look bothered. You almost wonder if the guy's breathing. He's just a statue, Jonathan. No feelings whatsoever from AU. Just complete composure. Yeah. And that's what you want to see from your coach, from your captain. I mean, just allow them to reset, stay calm, figure out what you want to do. Surprised that they respect Ban, the Phoenix themselves. Seeing that possibility of Egg Chrono, Sunray in Chrono is pretty big. They are already assuming that KP will take the Marcy offlane, which is fair. We have seen KP play that hero since its debut in Captain's Mode on the offlane. And that was when offlane Marcy felt like a little bit more of a waste. This time around, it, it feels a lot better just because you have more impact with a rebound. So it allows you to focus on core items a lot faster than, say, what diverging for this blink and Aether Lens. And they will go with a Pangolier. So that should shift the Marcy now. That could be our KP here. There's some flex here. I mean, that that could be a Mikado Pango and KP takes something like the Quap off lane. So it's fairly open for them to kind of figure out whether or not they get a lot of value from the off lane Pango here. It, it could even be a, a Quap Pos 4 if you really want, right? Like if you wanted the mm. Pos 3 Marcy, Quap Pos 4 seems like a pretty strong lane. And well, like you said, like Pango against Kunkka might be a bit better as well for Makoto. You already kind of pointed that out. So. Let's see. I mean, Talon, they do have a lot of flexibility with this draft. The only thing I think we can say for sure is it's probably going to be the position one void again, unless we see the pos one Marcy. Highly doubt any other <laughs> team apart from T1 have been practicing that, though, to be fair. So highly doubt that. I think you just go the pos one void once again. But there is certainly a lot of flexibility with every other single lane. Meanwhile, though, Polaris, one more pickup to go. They need to carry on their end of things against the void, against the Quap, against the Pango. Is there something that comes to mind for you, John? Hmm. Nothing that really strikes me as a very good pick. Ah, uh, like they tried a morphling last time, but it is it is open, and you know it's still not that bad of a morphling game at all. So you could maybe opt for that. You've got the Pangolier to roll, to form into the Marcy for Morphling to turn into. You love to point out gives you a lot more mobility. Sidekick on yourself is really nice. Wouldn't mind that too much for Natsumi. 
you could maybe opt for i don't know it's not the best terrorblade game it does feel like you have enough magic damage here on talon to kind of take care of that you could go for a more active core you know how slow talon wants to play and they go with lone druid so we see the ld come out and that has been also rising in popularity across different regions it can be effective uh we do see mikado pick up the pango so the question is yeah kp takes the marcy q will take the quap and we have seen q play quap but that was all the way back to motivate trust days so this mm. is a bit of a throwback for him Certainly is. Maybe, I don't know if they're overreacting here to the draft of Polaris. I mean, again, it was a very close game one, so I think Talon going to pay a lot of respect here to this dire oh. side. And Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, John. They, they swap Force and Xavius as well. Xavius takes Ooh. the Doom 4. Force plays the offlane Primal Beast here, which is... Okay. It, it's interesting, because I felt like Force did such a great job in the 4 primal beast that you don't really need to have it as a core the impact was felt from force early on uh from xavius early on but xavius on the doom i, I don't know if i really like that because doom as a support sure it still finds farm with devour but it feels like you know your midas is going to be a little bit slower that means your blink bkb is slower your refresh is going to be really later on and the ags might be a bit of a pipe dream so I, I think taking that utility away from the Doom by demoting it to a 4 and giving Force priority, it it doesn't feel necessary, but it does allow them to be a lot more aggressive from the Primal Beast with his earlier timing, so that might be what Polaris is gunning for. See how this one goes, Jonathan. Game number two. I mean, game one was just so great to watch here between these two teams going all the way to 66 minutes. Tatlin barely able to take it out. Polaris just not giving up throughout this upper bracket. This is, uh, I, I must say, I mean, Polaris Esports, it's so good to see these guys like performing so well in the upper bracket. Even if they did drop that game one, you know, it, they've just been such an up and down team. But it seems like when it matters, they've really shown up. Let's just see if they can show up and force us to a game three here against Talon Esports. Because you and, you and I, that's what we want, John. We want game three to come out here between these two. Of course, I know people are waiting for the T1 match. Oh, no. Oh, everyone's with T1. It's coming. Don't you worry, guys. It is coming. In fact, I mean, th this series might be more hype because, again, Why aren't they doing anything? They're Dakota just had around. some words about T1 oh, before the qualifiers started, so I'm sure people would love to see Talon vs. T1 if it ever came to it in the upper bracket. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see if it happens. Before that, though, John, it's your turn. Predictions. Which team will win? Oh, go, go, go. I'm going to say Talon. And I know you guys have got something to say about that. So it's early smoke break. <laughs> Maybe some action. No, not quite yet. Player with the first triple kill. Uh, I can't bet against Mikado. But I f yeah, no, I can't get bet against Mikado. I still feel like Polaris will find that one, though. Player with the most D wards by 15. Which can lean towards Hyde. Although I feel like AU probably is actually a bit more disciplined on that. And player with the longest kill streak. Hmm. Mikado had it last time. So I'm, I'm going to say Mikado again, although the Pango is not as slippery as the Pop. And we have seen Mikado kind of rich. die a little bit more in the Pango, so ready, Morty. maybe doesn't happen, but those are my bets. Yeah, Jonathan, we appreciate that. Well, I, I couldn't help but notice someone was asking earlier what uh, what the players were, you know, shaking in their hands. That is, Those are hand warmers, for anyone who's not aware. They aren't tea bags, they are hand warmers, so there you go. To warm up those hands before you do get into these games. Very, very important for these pro players. As on Artsumi, you're already getting very lucky with the route there onto KB, but cannot contest the banner rune. We'll have to back his spirit bear out. Meanwhile, bottom side, there was a bit of a fight over that banner rune as well, but it is going to end up being a two for two trade. This force <laughs> is really going to harass Q out before he does leave the area. Beautiful uh, little uproar there from our primal beast. Let's start with that mid lane. Makoto, gonna be on that mid pango. He'll be against the kind of poking. I'm surprised. Oh, oh, you. Uh, I'm gonna have to take over here. I believe John is having some uh, some issues here, so we are gonna move into the mid lane, which is gonna be Makoto and Lelouch going at it here on the Pango versus Kunka. 
be an interesting matchup. Of course, we did mention the Quap might have a bit of an unfavorable matchup against the Kunkka during that draft stage, so they do swap out for Makoto on the Pango instead. The Pango offering a lot of team fight as well, and just a lot better in terms of going up against the Kunkka. Kind of able to abuse the Shield Crash and the Swashbuckle to really be able to lean against the Lush. Because let's have a look at the side lanes as well. Perhaps bottom lane, you're going to have Force there on the Primal Beast along with his Doom Xavius playing the position 4. You're going to be on the position 4 Queen of Pain. 23 Savage is going to be playing that pause 1 Void. It does seem like a rather strong lane for either side. I'd say it does look stronger for, for Talon on this end of things though as well. Xavius on the, on the pause 4 Doom. You, you kind of question how much he can get done unless he finds the right creep. But now he does actually peel, pick up that healing creep, so that, that creep is always interesting because you have 100 heal on a 10 second cooldown for 60 mana. And in fact, it's more like 115 heal because of the heal amplification. So it can kind of save the day for force and you are seeing it in action. Just use it off cooldown every single time force needs it. Keep him healthy. And maybe Q just won't have the impact he's looking for on the support quad. Because you just have constant heals flying in from Xavius. It kind of works as force. He'll pop the uproar. Bit of harassment on Savage, but the Time Walk is going to take all that damage away. We'll have a look at that final lane as well. You're going to have the top lane. Hide on the Dazzle. Going to be there with KP on the position 3 Marcy. Against Natsumi on the Poz 1 Lone Druid. And AU, of course, on the position 5 Lich. The Lich Lone Druid lane, usually pretty darn powerful, especially because you can abuse the um, the Frost Shield with the Bear. As well as that, of course, Frost Hello, Blast, Mike. also very, very strong. And you do see a with some mangoes. Hello, Jonathan. Nice <laughs> to see you back, sir. Just took yeah, a short you know, break, did you? Yeah, classic Southeast Asian stuff for me this time good around. Good. Good, to, good to hear at least you were unaffected. How has the game been going? I missed <laughs> out a lot. Three minutes is a long time to miss out here. I mean, not much has happened, John. First blood hasn't been drawn. I was just discussing the top lane. If you'd like to have you put your two cents in here, John, I was just kind of explaining that Natsumi and AU might have a very good time at this top lane with the Lich and Lone Druid, but I, I suppose it goes the other way as well. Like with the Dazzle Marcy, you do have to be very careful. And they're doing a great job on talent to actually cut off that early CS of Natsumi. Off to a bit of a slower start. There are some good combos on hand, just Poison Touch plus Sidekick and Rebound, of course, is really good. And you can't actually underestimate literally anyone with Sidekick, especially at level 2, level 3. The bonus damage on high chasing down with Poison Touch can whittle you down very quickly. So that is leading to that caution here. Like I, I, I think I heard you mention like a Frost Shield combination with Natsumi on the bear. That can happen, but it puts your bear at risk. And early levels of the bear are pretty manageable. For the side of town so you don't want to run that risk of bleeding gold over here certainly not back at that mid lane for a moment makoto he's having a very good time in terms of cs but now the x is out into the torrent onto makoto but hide has rotated yes <laughs> it's around the, the mid river area to secure the water rune let's make sure makoto can't really get jumped too hard it's gonna give the water rune over to makoto as well so he does get those two bottle charges up and it does seem like the lane switch up from Talon has worked out, John. Like, instead of having that mid quap, the mid Pango is certainly doing a pretty damn good job against Lelouch's Kunkka, which you would have assumed would have been more lane dominant, but against the Pango, not so much. Yeah, there's more play from the Pato. He's keeping up in CS. He's managing to trade fairly well. And overall, you're pretty happy. You're not giving any opportunities for Lelouch to find that kill opportunity in the Torrents. And Tidebringer is still a big threat. But Shield Crash does allow you to play a lot better. And uh, you can trade with the Squash a little bit more. So lots of back and forth there. I think the side of Brax and Talon kind of expect that slow restart. Although it's happening. Um, walk away. Onslaught is there onto Q, but he can also blink away. So the one strength of this bottom lane for Talon is they do have great ways of getting away from that Primal Beast. Which is probably why you see Hyde at the top lane with his Marcy instead. Like just giving Q a, a way to get out on this Quap. Not allowing Force to completely dominate this lane. Yeah, now that is what you're getting out here. Like, aggression from Polaris is being cut off. Savage is farming decently, although he is starting to have the same issues Natsumi is. Not quite the freest time in lane. And this no. time around, Natsumi's gonna have a really good time in the jungle. That is where Lone Druid can shine. Doesn't take too long to farm. Uh, once you reach that 10 to 12 minute mark and you dip into the jungle, you will have a lot to clear out that you're not going to be able to quite match here Whoa. on Savage, so that it is a concern to have. Courier. 
We already have Savius taking some early activity, going into the jungle, you know, getting Radiant some creeps attack. up for himself, does steal out the crit wolf, and is already showing mid. Like Doesn't have anything like the Infernal Blade to help set up, but he might have enough damage on hand. The thing is, Rolling Thunder is up already for Mikado. Kill him off is just tougher. With your control, it's not quite there. No, absolutely. You're not going to be able to abuse the same creep timing, that's for sure. And it is already gone. Makoto does take care of it. For the dead. Mind you, hide. He also ends up denying off the regen rune against Lelouch, and that's going to probably put a halt to any kind of mid push as well. You can't really get too aggressive now as Polaris. Their way out, and first blood is yet to be drawn from either side. Both sides just very conservative play during this laning stage so far. There is a group up top side here from the side of Talon, but it seems like they're just hanging around together, making sure they can clear out these uh these stacks that were made from Makoto. Tango. Decent at farming these stacks, but does need a little bit of help to just tank through it all and hide will assist in that. Under attack. Yep. Good amount of gold injection coming out from Makoto. It's uh, still a bit behind the Lush in terms of overall net for it. And the Conquer just doing it a little attack. bit faster, of course, with Max out Tidebringer. But again, rather even game. Gold lead is just kind of bouncing around. Everyone's kind of had mirror uh, situations come out. Like both Savage and Natsumi are a little bit slower off. KP and Force are having better times. Just managing to get into that point where the buildup is there. But the kill threats can start to appear. I feel like you're at the point you should be able to show up. Force will go down the hit. This could be a big one. Both has been thrown out. It's just a defensive vote for the run, but Makoto, he's got a perfect angle for the Rolling Thunder. Still the low ground pushback. Is there on to Leilouche? He will survive a little bit longer. Makoto, he'll keep the chase going, and Leilouche eventually is going to drop first blood to go the way of Hyde as Savage. He even shows up in the mid lane and does find Xavius. A super early rotation from Talon on the pause one void. And now there's four heroes in this mid lane from Talon. They haven't got a siege creep. I Good doubt boy, they can push. Under it seems like they just wanted to make sure that mid flight went their way. Yeah, and pays Radiant off. That is some time where Savage isn't farming. So you are having a better time on Natsumi, but even then, the AoE gold kind of compensates. Natsumi still trucking a little bit behind. Um, he is still working onto the Mask of Madness for his bear. Phase boost almost done. He will TP away from that lane. He understands that. Not sustainable anymore. Should play bot. Has a push opportunity here with force. Oh, Talent for their part can attack. also look to kind of trade top. The sidekick on Void again is pretty uh, damn strong, but they are hunting here. Yeah, yeah you gets caught out. Makoto, so much damage off with one swash buckle and KP was Radiant there to, to follow up on the Marcy. So the pulse 5 Lich is set uh, to drop. Savage, he does get started on top T1 tower in the meantime, and of course, the bottom T1 is going to be forced in by Natsumi. He's the only one there to, to try and defend the bottom T1, oh, but against the Spirit Bear, really can't do too much. Meanwhile, Force gone. unable to grab him with the Pulverize. Uh, Not going to be able to lock down attack. the Queen of Pain. And it is going to be a direct T1 for T1 trade anyway. So, yeah, Lone Draw generally one of the heroes that pushes very quick, but for now, it's just going to be a very even trade as mid lane. Xavius going to get knocked down to the low ground once again by Makoto. KB is there to back him up, however, so Xavius still in a spot of bother to toss back right into the Rolling Thunder. That's teamwork if I've ever seen it. Leilouge still is around with the boat. Makoto, he's going to cop the whole thing. He does get a shield crash, but it is not going to make the difference. Force holds him down with the pulverize and they do take out the mid panga. And it's a good trade to take. You trade your support for the core of Talon. Mikado maybe Dyer's just getting a little bit too attack. far forward. Didn't manage to swash away in time. Good chain stuns coming out from Polaris's end. And that's some of the aggression we need to see from, from them. That's their first kill of the game. But how low their cooldowns are, wouldn't be surprised if they start lining up around that in no time here and start buying out space that Natsumi will need. Now, Xavius also has this level 6 up. Does have the Doom ready to go with the Tranks off. He's a very speedy Doom. Not going to take him too long to gap close, although Savage really playing tag there. Does have Chrono. Again, there's not too much damage that can fly in from that. Hyde's almost trying to bait them forward here. Maybe trying to get that Chrono expended, but of course... Dyer's able to just walk away. under attack. Well, a Midas build up here is here for Natsumi now, so just wanting to go the uh, little bit of a greedier route with the Midas. Still makes perfect sense on the lone draw. The, uh, the added attack speed always nice as well for the Spirit Bear, so you can't complain about that. Uh, it always reminds me of the meta we had way back in the day where lone draw would, would build two Midases. 
on both the hero and the spirit fit. <laughs> that, was, that wasn't a jump, just minus after oh. minus. Yeah, that's disgusting. Just play Arc Warden if you want the whole Midas <laughs> man. You know, that's a, that's a hero Mike loves to see. No, I don't, John. Savage. He's gonna get x up. Lauren is there. Savage, he does pop the Chrono. He's caught two, but it's a defensive Chrono. He just wants to get out of this. Hide. He looks like he will take the gank to the team. Chrono expended. It is still a bit more value for Polaris, but I think Talon will be okay with Savage just walking away from that. Yeah, they're fine. They knew that if they don't Iron pop the Chrono, and Doom's gonna come out and Savage is just straight up dead. So you have to just expend that spell back off, keep farming. Talon are a bit more fond of the slower games. And I do appreciate that Polaris understands that. And you mentioned this greed out from Natsumi. If he isn't ganked up, I mean, this greed will pay off. He already farms a lot better, uh, a little bit lower risk as well, putting the bear in front instead. As long as the bear doesn't die with Midas on cooldown, yeah, you're pretty set here. Elush, X is himself back, he's gonna be okay. Trying to back his way out. A full Q or a two right now. Q. Bottom lane, doing this? Spend the kid from Xavius. Nice tonight, Kodo. <laughs> Well, it comes up as well if they want to expend it. It said KP is just going to move in and help out, and I suppose we'll get the job done. So that'll be Doom expended, and they really get nothing for it. No, that's kind of funny, too, because Chrono went out to stop the Doom. Xavius well feels like he needs to make play, goes for the solo Doom on the pop, and still gets the night off. So you kind of oh, neutralize each other's bigger ults. In fact, it's a little bit better for Talon, because the Chrono Sphere is off cooldown a bit sh sooner. So there's not much of a threat on Savage. They're looking down mid here, though. KP, he's gonna cop it, force, he'll try to onslaught into hide, does pick up the dazzle, allowing no shallow graves to come out, so Polaris, he would have set up for a T1 mid tower, but Makoto is gonna move in with the rolling thunder, onto the conquer, Lelouch, he'll be locked down for a while, but where's the follow-up damage, Savage, he's gonna loot it up, KP trying to help with the dispose, and now the oh. sonic wave, it's gonna buy some time at the X-Pack, Savage is still gonna drop, Polaris would not allow him to run this time. Oh As Force will charge Four. forward, oh, he finds KP and they even got Makoto. What a fight from Polaris. Great coordination from this dire side. They're lining up that aggression. They know they've got a lot of spells on fairly low cooldowns that they can just constantly force out. And this is where Talon's draft kind of bites them. They just don't have damage. They're gonna need farm. They need this build up on Mikado and on Savage to really have any sort of presence up in the middle of these fights. They don't have a save when someone is held down by that pulverize. And every single time Force commits, it's pretty much a guaranteed kill. He just don't have that natural stun that he did have with Nyx in the last game, where Spike Carapace would just be a massive saving spell. You just have so much more to play with. Like you can just see the execution, the confidence of players to just go in in that fight, knowing that there's nothing to stop them here. <laughs> now 3k advantage for Polaris we've seen this story before off core net worth lead already is the dire side once again forced to just keep farming with that Midas into the Maelstrom build up we did see Talon buy plenty of time for him last time mind you that was off the back of Makoto on that puck he doesn't have said puck anymore he's got the pango this time around not as slippery of a hero and not as great at split pushing as the puck was but done Meanwhile for Polaris, I mean, Natsumi's having a really strong start on the Lone Druid. Not even top net worth yet, Force and, uh, Force and the Kunkka are still ahead of him, but Natsumi should be able to escalate quite fast here on the Lone Druid. Continue farming up, and the Desolator build up. Especially once you have that Desolator up, those towers, they just start to melt so quick. Even quicker than they do already. So it might just be about yeah. outpacing talent in this game number two. That's where the beauty of that LD pickup comes in. It can scale towards the late game, but it's earlier times you're just so much better than the faces void. The push threat is always there. And if you do want to play that slower game against the against Lone Druid, well, it, it just grows bigger and bigger. The bear becomes a massive issue. You don't have the best burst damage on hand. The talent strap is sneaking around here in Polaris. He'll take the game for the team. Force. He'll still be happy to take the kill. He's more than oh, happy geez, for any Radiant kill right Warrior now on the uh, on the primal beast. Back so soon. 
Knight's been doing a great job with this position though. Making sure he doesn't allow the opening. Meanwhile, bottom side, Xavius. He chased down. There's an opening for Talon. Another support to be picked off. KP, he'll take that one on the Marcy. So support for support going down. A little bit more valuable here for the side of Talon. So they found the POS 4 for the POS 5. But still not, not really anything to write home about for either side. Yeah, not the biggest loss. Flaris just still gonna be happy. Lelouch was kind of in the firing line there. So he doesn't stay too long and doesn't run that risk. You know, leave Savius to kind of cop it for him. Side of Polaris, and they're getting everything they want here, though. Oh, they're, they're just grouping up off attack. the back of Natsumi's bear. Going for pushes. The Desolator one part oh, away now. And these, these objectives just don't oh, last long. Talon cannot fight. Talon cannot stall in the same way as they did in game one. And Polaris see that opening and just play a much more aggressive game. And again, even if this game slows down at some point, you've got great scaling from Luindry, you've got great scaling from Xavius, you've seen Primal Beast just be a, a menace with the Ag Shard and the Blink BKB, who forces also lining up for that short game. So you have a lot of options. They're taking towers fast here, John. Uh, that top tier too. Look at the, the HP pool of the... Natsumi, it, it's one thing as well, like, you can always split push with this lone Druid and now Doom out, KP. He's a much bigger target to be able to pick off the Polaris, and they found him. Onslaught is there, follow up, and he's gone. That's a big one. Does bait out the big spell. So KP in, in way is buying some space here, but can't afford to lose more off the back. Of Q. In court, Leiluj will throw the target boat in, times it perfectly, no blink to come out. The animation halfway there, but not quite enough. Leilouche able to take a mega kill streak now on the mid Kunka. And again, just such a powerful start for Polaris Esports. 6k advantage, 18 minutes into the game. So they even found Makoto now. No matter available, Wait, they'll pulverize him up and they've got the damage. Man, you might as well save that Force energy. Force Leilouche. They are just a menacing duo this game too. They're, they're running it really well. They, they just see this change up from game one where in game one they took it a lot slower this time it's just non-stop aggression looking for pickups every time their lineup excels at that they melt objectives fast for the space given for natsumi as well and there's just no counterplay this time from talent they take care of that issue with a puck by banning it out and now town stall game it's it's not showing itself but these these objectives will just melt the map is shrinking fast and the timings for Savage still feel of, oh, a long ways off from coming online here. Polaris, I, I think they've managed to study that game one really well. And these are all the issues they had in game one just disappearing. And Tal needs to find a new way to gain entry in this game, but it doesn't feel like they're just working it out well enough. Wait, no, He's experienced this before. He's Over ice into the turn, and now even the tidal wave is up for Leilouche. Very early shards pick up, but considering he got the BKB so early, he just picks up the shards for that, that added kind of pushback, the displacement on the Kunkan. Polaris, they're getting very close to a point where they can just start thinking about Roshan. Hell, they could do it right now, but it seems like they want to try for this mid C2 tower, because they've got the Desolator already up on Natsumi. Look how fast this tower goes down. Glyph is forced out, they will glyph the creep wave. They want this tower real back. Uh, and they're gonna stick around for it. They're gonna try and force a fight from Talon. Just a couple of right clicks, already down to 774 HP. Going for a bit of a reset and the fault's back. Back to pull. Talon are kind of grouped up to try to fight back here. Diffuse ults up in Mikado, so there's a little bit more damage output in control. And Polaris discipline themselves, look for more. Yeah, zoom out again, KB. Trying to split push and buy that space you mentioned, John, but he's gonna try another, uh, die another time here to Xavius. And now Roshan, he can get started. They feel very confident without the pos 3 Marcy being up. The Natsumi, right into the Roshan pit. And Talon, I don't think they'll even think about trying to force this fight. Hell, they might not even know what's happening. 
here. They have no way of sneaking up as well. They take control of the bot jungle instead. Not the fastest rush in the world, but you have good wards to protect here on Polaris's end. That's going to be a nice Aegis to enable that high ground, enable themselves to clear out those last outer towers here from the side of Talon. Talon, they, they just have to play it slow. They have to wait for these BKBs to be up. At least with the BKBs, the only trek will be Doom for quite a while. So you will have more play coming out for McLeod with 4 KP. And Polaris will have to kind of make that choice on Xavius, but he's been pretty on point finding solo pickups anyway. So if Talon don't play around these BKB timings, that just kind of falls flat. And just these outer towers definitely didn't melt for the Aegis up. Not so safe. Huh? Hanging around that big Radiant tier two. Polaris want to try for it. Talon, they are pushing down the bottom tier one tower, but that's not going to be anywhere near as valuable as what Polaris are getting out of this. That tier two mid tower, it is not going to last. In fact, a very clever drafting from Polaris Esports, I'd say. Of course, the execution so far has just been perfect. They are going to smoke up, but I believe that was underneath an observer wall. So Talon should know about this four-man smoke coming in from Polaris. Oh, However, Hyde, he is around the corner on the Dazzle. He's gonna back his way up. Oh, Polaris still towers. looking around for someone Destroyed. near the base. The thing is, if they can find a big pick-off near the Radiant base, they might think about high ground this early. There's really nothing to stop them. Like, Natsumi's just in control of this game, farming up like a madman. He's gonna have a Batcher up soon on Bear. And once that's up, it's just so annoying to try to deal with it. We haven't seen Savage go for any Chronos yet as well, so you do have that tool on hand for Talon. And Talon will actually smoke up his four. Trying to fight into the Aegis, maybe catch Polaris a bit declumped here. Talon. Whoa, Red smoke up, Polaris Esports, they are still attack. clumped up once again. They're playing this very smart, just sticking as a team, understanding how powerful they are right now. They know that Talon can't really get a team fight going their way. AU, he's gonna break the smoke, they'll try to roll in on the Lich, but his team is right behind him. Do they let the Lich die for free? AU, still oh, hanging around, does get a Chain Frost off, but it only bounces onto Q. Polaris, still rushing forward, looking for an X back onto the Quap, not gonna get it. So the Lich does go down. That's about the best Talon could have got. That's a that's a free kill, but it's not a great kill. It's just something. Yeah, it 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 doesn't really impact the siege that comes out here from Polaris. Do you still have a Chrono ready on Savage? I'm not sure if he's even going to show up. This fight BKB is off. They're just on the high ground, John. Look at this. That's to me. Yeah, that's a T3 tower gone. Wrecked. 23 and a half minutes in, Polaris. They went from losing game one to speed running game two. Just playing that faster game again after their big issue. You. X out, current will land, both will land as well. Shallow Grave is gonna buy a little bit of time with the rock throw and the onslaught into the pulverize. Q cannot make it. The rest of Talon, they, they just can't think about a fight right now. You've got BKB on Savage, but do you have damage? That's the problem. It's not the point there. Even with maxed out sidekick, you, you are lacking out here on Savage. And the racks, if they don't stop this, it's just gonna melt. They're gonna pop the rolling thunder to try and defend this. Natsumi does get kicked by the stun. He got the spirit bear form off in time. Savage, oh, the doom came out. Xavius, he caught the void. No chrono available. And Makoto is gonna get caught by the pulverize. The shallow grave by a little bit of time. A nice sonic wave. Hive actually saves the day here for, for the Pango. They are looking to turn this one. They lose. Also caught out. KP with a great rebound in. Force. He will be KP on floor, but it's not far enough. Savage. He'll get the chrono eventually. Hyde. Hyde has turned this one around. The pause five dazzle with the saves. It turns everything for Talon. Just that little shallow grave at the end to enable Mikado to come back into that fight. And they also managed to throw their bodies for it to ensure Savage would still be able to come in with a chrono. Oh boy, it is a lot more back attack. and forth. And on the side of Flyers, still find a lot off the map. And this is a pretty naked map now for Talon. No tier 3 down Dyer's mid. Rax will just melt a Dyer's neck shove tower. in from Natsumi. 
but Talon are still finding a way to stall this game out. Now, it's not enough to swing this game back in any way. It's a 4k lead for Polaris. They still have majority control. They've got BKB up in Zavis. He's actually saving up for that Ags now on the Doom. So the AoE Doom is going to cause a lot of issues for what Talon wants to do here. Like, there is just no way to continuously save Savage at that point. The hide spacing has to be perfect. And they're going to have to watch themselves. I think Polaris, they're still confident. Aegis is going to expire, though. But they can at least maybe gun for that one set of racks or even just a pickoff here. Absolutely. Polaris not going to be happy with that last team fight. We'll try again. No uh, Chrono up this time. No Sonic okay. Wave up this time. It's an easier team fight for Polaris. They'll move in. E3 Tower. And rather, Rax is under siege again. Rock Throw is there. Makoto could pop the rolling thunder. Back it up to the lone board. They're going to try to force the fight another time with the boat. He's going to fly in. KB still going with his BKB out. It's a lot of damage onto Natsumi. He's still alive, however. He'll try to walk away. Makoto continues as well. Savage will jump in. They got Natsumi once again. The lone board is down. They make it happen through the BKB timings, but now the turnaround with a great train frost. It's not enough. Shallow Grave onto KB is going to buy him a little bit of time. AU is gone. Force, he looks very gone as well. That's two team fights in a row to go the way of Talon. They throw their bodies at the mid racks for a second time. They got the melee barracks, John, but they have thrown the whole net worth lead back the way of Talon. I don't know who you know what? Worth. It's definitely not. You know what, Mike? This takes me back. I, I remember now in that one game in the ESL1 Genting qualifiers that Talon and Polaris played up against each other. Talon had this abysmal start. They looked absolutely terrible. It looked like KP was playing with his keyboard unplugged. And then Polaris, they have this thing with high ground. And they have this thing with high ground where they keep trying to force it sometimes, and it looked like a decent choice. The Aegis did expire, but they felt like it was risk-free, there's no Chrono to worry about. And somehow Talon manages to punish them. Ooh, and I, I just get flashbacks back to Genting, because that was, that was the kind of game where you just feel defeated. Hopefully for Polaris, you know, that's just something, this is something they can uh, just brush off. You know, like water off a, back, a duck's back, right? Is that the word? Something like that. Yes. Um, they just kind of reset. They still have this good start. But you've given Talon the way back in almost. You know, Savage isn't that far behind from Natsumi. We're reaching the point where the Void's gonna be protected. He's gonna work towards Lincoln. It's that Ags we talked about on Xavius. It's a support Doom. It's gonna take more time. He doesn't have a Midas. So then, theoretically, Polaris might want to stall the game out. But then you're stalling the game out up against Savage's Void. Which is always a risk. This is Savage's most comfy hero right up there with a morph light. So is that really something you want to kind of poke out? Because that is something they tried in the last game, and it, it gets so difficult. Yeah, you do have scaling with Doom. You do have scaling with the utility on on your Konka, especially as BKBs fade. There's still this really good blink timing coming out for Force. But boy, does it get scary. They've got to find hide in these fights. If they don't, the saves buys just enough time for Talon to kind of turn back in. Hyde, Hyde might need a back massage after this one, Jonathan. He's just bad must be sore. Oh, Jesus Christ, he's, he's kept his team in the game twice in a row now. Zap. The Polaris, they are 3k ahead in terms of net worth. They still have the advantage. Their lone druid is still the biggest net worth and the biggest hero on the map. Problem is, Savage is only 700 gold behind. It's literally the same story as game number one. There's your smoke up. Four-man smoke here from Talon. They'll go through the Radiant Triangle, into the Dire Jungle. Mind you, there's a side of the Vice up now on Elouche. They don't know all about this. It has not been revealed. Could be a, a bad time to smoke here for Talon. They won't find the opening they wanted anyway. And now a five-man smoke. Here we go again. Polaris, they aren't done banging their heads against the wall, John. They're gonna, they're gonna go again. Through the mid lane. Makoto, he might be the one to break the smoke. Force, you might see him. Makoto sees them first. Onslaught is there. Force, it's a bit too short. AU. Gets the gaze off with a great ward on the high ground. Into the rock 
through. Now the chain frost. They've locked down the void. Pulverize oh, is there. Sonic Wave well, out. Well, Savage, he pops his BKB. He's still fine, and Xavius is gone. Now the Chrono, he's got two targets, or rather just the bear and the primal beast, but he'll go on to force. Onslaught away. Oh, oh right. right into the loving arms of Makoto. We'll get stunned up. Now they've got the conquer. That's Leilu's gone. Oh my god. Not again. They have done it a third time. It's Hyde, he saves Mikado again. He's just oh, there with the grave, him. there with the flash healing from the good Juju and the Shadow Wave, and it's just enough every time for him to get off the BKB and roll back in. Polaris, this, uh, it, I, I can't say they're out of it. Because frankly, Talon has no objectives to take. Roshan, in half a minute, respawn is going to be up. And you didn't expand Doom on Xavier. So there is still play here. No Chrono on Savage for the next fight. You have an opening on Polaris. But you have got to be careful about this kind of fight. AU drops a good ward on the high ground. And, he, you know, they feel like they've got this initiation. They break off the roll from Mikado. They jump in and commit. But that gave Savage free reign to jump in and out himself. And it's still not Mikado you have to catch. They've been catching Hyde before. They need to do that again. If this Dazzle uh, stays alive, it, the game is just so difficult. And mind you, this is Hyde without something like the Aether Lens, too. AU, AU, he gets for a D ward. He's caught out. Xavier's tried to jump in. They've got the low draw with Natsumi. He was locked out by Mikado. Still is, in they go, Xavius, he is gone, on the turn, on the force, on the conquer, everyone is melting. Oh, Roshan's available as well, Polaris, what have you done? What have you done? Oh, no, they have, well, uh... I mean, that, that's rough. Like, he couldn't get the Doom off on Zeus. He got silent stuff in the middle of that fight as well. And now with the Aegis coming out here, likely for Savage, uh, with a free shard to come out as well. I game's just difficult. Like, this this mid set of reps, this opening on the tier trees, it, it just felt like Polaris should have found more. But they haven't. They, they bashed their heads against that wall twice over. They forced the team fights out. Suddenly a 7k lead out for Talm. Polaris, their high ground can be nice with the Kunkka. We need to see the Doom commitment from Savis. He's almost at the Axe. He just needs a Look little bit more. Look at the graph. Oh, God. You're, I mean, if you lose this game too as Polaris, you're not going to... You're going to look back at that. You're not going to be happy. And that is... Uh, there's no other way to put it if you lose this game. That is a throw. Oh, I mean, that is... It's... Uh, I don't want to be rude, John. I don't want to be rude. Yeah, yeah. But that, 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 that was not how to do it. That's for sure. No, I mean, by the graph, that is definitely... See that Netford swing? Yeah. Uh, again, this takes me back Tired to that Genting game, Mikey, where... I think it was with Otomo, and that was... It was almost like this, except it felt even more impossible to tell. Like, those circumstances were a lot worse. And I, th I think Polaris still has what it takes. They've got to be able to do something like... This adds on Xavius. One can go the way. He can't die now. Beating. It's gone. No, no. no, someone's down south. Xavius, can he get away? Oh, he can. Kodo. Needed to press a bit, bit more on the that gas pedal. Not able to get there in time. Polaris, they're doing their best to just split push the bot lane and force the side of Talon back. They don't want to even allow them to think about high ground. Force has done a very good job down to that bot lane of keeping the creep wave forced out. They can't think about the tier 2 bottom tower either. So that outer tower objective is still going to be standing here for Polaris Esports. Talon, they'll hold on to the Aegis for another 3 minutes. Maybe just wait for Savage to have the full Mjolnir up before you want to force another fight anyway. Just about 300 gold away from having the Hyperstone to finish that one off. Already has the recipe sitting in his backpack. And then maybe you could think about forcing a fight and going high ground after. Yeah. Opens up at that point. Age is still up for quite a bit of time here on Talon's end as well. And that looks to be the full Mjolnir up. An instant smoke out from Talon. For Polaris, this part, they are deep clumped, so they're not allowing oh, man, Talon to look for these big engagements. And they are still keeping that bot shoved in. But a simple pickoff here for Talon can still kind of enable them to find more in Natsumi. He's a prime target here. He is. He'll TP out immediately, and they are not going to be able to make it in time. Q. He was very close. They have got the bear, though. Natsumi is actually very, very lucky there, because Q did have the ult set to cancel the, uh, the TP away. 
His blink was right on target as well. It was just a second off. Ooh. Spirit Bear not going to get out. Yeah, it's going to get out as well. Very nice. Uh, I, I thought Return was cancelled when there's damage. Uh, did manage to get it in the nick of time, so you don't really lose out on too much. You do waste some time here from Talonson. You waste the roll as well. So there's a bit of a window if you do manage to get that jump in. Tags for Xavius, man. 180 gold away. That's the big one. AOE Doom. That could be the beginning of the return for Polaris here once that's up. It could be. It's a, it's a great axe build up here from Xavius if he can get it in time. He'd love it right now. 115 gold for it. Nice tie to Wave Lelouch. Into the Scythe of Vice. No backup though. Savage, he's fine. There's that axe you talked about. It is now available. Sun is out. Root is there. They've got Savage locked down. But there's your Shallow Brain. Hide. He's not going to allow it. You have to find this dazzle. Savage, again, you're gonna avoid the stun this time. Makoto, he'll go for the rolling thunder. Connecting on two. They found the Kunkka. They've got the Kunkka locked down. They lose. He's in trouble. Hey, you. He gets caught out as well. He could have helped out. He'll have to buy back. He'll have to buy back and try to defend. Not have buyback available, though. The Doom is up. The Axe is up. But they don't have the buyback gold to bring him back into this game. So Talon, they can just keep going. Into the mid racks. No Chrono, but who the hell cares? You've still got the Aegis. Savage making it very hard to even get close. Do they think about the top racks? Oh no, Dire's It seems like they may. Oh, Dire's top tower is under attack. This is risky. Aegis doesn't have too long left, and respawns are coming out soon for Xavius. Still pretty scary, dude. Certainly is. Maybe you get it off. Maybe. We'll find a spirit bear. Rock throw again. Savage being very, very nasty with that time dilation. And the reverse time walk. It's just very hard to keep up with the man. Lelouch is the only one that can really catch him out with the X or the Scythe of Vice. Hasn't had the uh, the greatest of opportunity doing so, though. And so that'll be one Rex down in the mid lane. D3 towers still standing on the side lanes as well. Not too big of a deal yet for Polaris, but the bigger deal is the fact that they've committed two buybacks. And there's a 14k disadvantage now for this Dire team. I mean, if they find one good teamfight on Polaris, that threat of a push is still massive. So it, it doesn't put them out of game yet. And again, you've still got this threat. Doom ready to go. I will say one thing as a bit of a diversion here, Mike. I saw Q killing up the Ags in this Quamp. And he switches out. I mean, he's got the full Kaya Sanj, but I wanted to see that AoE shit. That Shadow Strike with the little scream at the end. <laughs> that that would have been fun, but Q gets his senses together. I wish he didn't. I want to see that Ags. Yeah. It happens. I've tried the Ags personally. I think it's complete garbage, let me tell you, John. But it, is, it, is, you know, it would have been fun to watch, just to see it in a pro match. Q's going to be sensible, though. He won't pick it up for now. Five Man Smoke is here, though. Talon. Grouped up through the mid lane. Polaris, they'll hang around their dire triangle. They've got vision around this area, so this is the best chance they possibly have of fighting apart from their own high ground. Talon are slowly making their way over to that triangle. Polaris are waiting right underneath their own vision. Thorin is there. Drop throw is out as well. There's your doom out. Xavier, he casts it on himself. Sonic Wave will push him away, however. Now Savage, he gets caught out. Shallow Grave, though, hide. Again, gonna save the day, but can they save him through the Shallow Grave? The game's gonna hold him down. Savage is gone. Morning. That's a great start. Polaris will keep trying, but Makoto, he's doing so much damage on the Pango. The KB gets caught, but Hyde's gonna save him again. Natsumi, he has been left behind on the bear and he is taken down. AP, he'll pick up a double. They're thinking about going high ground once again, even without the void. Who cares? It's four versus four versus one. How do you defend defenders Polaris? You've got no buybacks. Can't. The one saving grace is that megas aren't available with the tier two still standing bot. The one issue right now is even if you clear them all out, like Q is basically a core with his build up. Even just jumping for solo here. Obliterated. Force. Yeah, I mean, he's trying to get Q, but even Q's too tanky now. Force. He is buying time to protect that top Rax, but it's already gone. They're just going for a free kill here onto Force. This will be the full team wipe they were looking for. And Talon will get it eventually. At least Force does have buyback, but he doesn't need to commit it yet. There is a tier 2 tower standing down that bot lane. 
So Talon cannot go for Mega Creeps. But they are two Raxes ahead and now 20k net worth lead ahead. And I don't mean to make matters worse for Polaris John, but that was a team fight lost with the Void down. We did not see a Krona. Yeah, I mean, that was probably the ideal circumstance, right? They get a Doom off, maybe that pushback kind of hurts them a little bit with the Tidal Wave and with all the spells they have changing the movement. Um, but in the end, they, they get to hold on to that one hero. Again, the issue here is Talon doesn't have just three cores. They have basically four. Q is just basically a semi-carry. Like uh, Kai Sanj, the output of this clock is huge, and Q has free reign to just jump in and out. He's going towards that Ags this time, Mikey. And I hope he manages to find a gold for it. Roshan up once more. Polaris, they don't have vision in the pit. They've not been able to go near the area anytime recently. Talon are gonna have another secondary life. And a free Ags upgrade here as well. Why not? I think the Savage, I think. Look, you, you could try to steal it if you want. Oh, oh, hide? hide? <laughs> no way. Oh, he gives oh. it the hide. You know, I like that from Savage, because Hyde's carried this game for But those couple team fights where Polaris were in the lead, pushing high ground, those shallow graves from Hyde over and over again, is the only reason Talon's still in this game. So Hyde, he gets a free X message this time. He deserves it. I mean, he can, refresh, he can refresh their BKBs, right? Oh. So that's massive. Oh. <laughs> easily refresh your item cooldowns. Yeah, for, second BKB use for Savage, second BKB use for Mikado. Heck, a refresh Lincolns could be even good here, depending on the circumstances. <laughs> so there's a lot of value there. All right, let's go for it. Okay. That's actually, uh, that's actually going to be fun to watch. Dakota. Mikado got himself stuck in the cliff and then into the tree line, had to swash away, which is why we'll Q see. tipped him. <laughs> oh, he's and got a gold line. The axe is that what we got for oh. I'm fine. I'm fine. No, don't listen to Mike. Follow your heart, Q. You know better. Uh, this is a wrap by Wind Waker or something, Q. Be responsible. G2 <laughs> uh, bottom tower is not going to last. Natsuki is to be pushing the bot lane. The they do you? have you a creep wave still down in that bot lane, so they could try to protect this creep wave through a dying glyph if they wish. Savage, throwing it up, stunned up, trying to wait, side for Vice. Damage is there, Natsumi, trying to pump it out as Force, gonna miss the onslaught, and now the Chrono in the backside. Natsumi, he's caught, he did not get the bear form off in time, he is gonna die, but he has buyback. He'll commit immediately as now the Doom is out. Xavius with the Chain Frost, slowing down Makoto, who's underneath T4 towers for some reason. Will buy back. Here we go again, the Doom's still going. Savage now, in trouble, has the Aegis, will have to expend it. That's the first time. Meanwhile, KP will rush in as the Marcy, but cannot hold down the Doom. Can you keep fighting without the Doom of Xavius? That's the question. Because Talon, they don't seem to think they can. Destroy. Boy, there's some angry people beating up on Dyer's bottom barracks. Just gonna be able to clear out last set of racks. One more up top, it's just a range. Flash, without the Doom, this team fight feels awkward. Yeah, they go again. Leiluch is gone, no buyback. Refresh on the Chrono. Savage doesn't even need it. GG is called. Polaris Esports. Oh, they were so close. They were so close to getting a game three.